Good morning, church. I'm Stephen Walker. I'm the preaching minister with the Canal City Church of Christ. You've got me here with Jacob Glassbell. He's our youth minister. Uh, we are obviously with you in a very different format than usual. And maybe Jacob, you can talk a little bit about why that is. Yeah, um, again, just introducing the coronavirus as it is. Uh, but this week's been kind of a different week. This week we got the uh, shut-in notice from Governor Justice. And so it's kind of been a crazy week at work for me. Uh, my job is actually still considered an essential business. So I've been at work and we've been kind of shifting our personnel around. So it's kind of put a weird thing on our schedule, mine and Steven's schedule. So I think really that's kind of where we're at. Uh, we're hoping to be together next week. It was just scheduling conflicts between both of us I could be available but Stephen couldn't and vice versa so but next week we'll definitely be back at it uh, at the church we'll make it work. this week we're gonna yeah we're gonna try to make this zoom conference thing work so um. well Jacob um maybe maybe before we get started you know people have been asking um once again about the kind of the resources that we have for them uh, we kind of give them some resources every, every week you know, songs that they can be listening to, some things they can be doing with their kids, uh, so on and so forth. We normally post links to those, but uh, why don't you kind of introduce those for us? Yeah, so uh, this week, something, one song that's really been on my heart, on my mind, uh, is a song called Stronger. Uh, it's by the, or it's, uh, there's a cover of it from the Zoe group, like I've been mentioning. Um, and it's just a very, I, I really like that song. It's very powerful and really has hit me this week. Um, and then Richard Walker, actually your dad, he got a hold of me last week and introduced me to a new song, which is very encouraging to me that there are songs out there that I don't know. I mean, I know there's a lot of songs out there that I don't know, but I've heard a lot of songs, <laughs> but it, this one's called In Need, um, and Praise and Harmony does that. So I'll have the links to both of those songs, Stronger and In Need, uh, in the description of this video along with a children's lesson that we're gonna post on here. Um, and I think that that children's lesson is gonna go pretty well with what we have going on today. Okay, so. awesome, awesome. Um, well, all right, well, maybe to kind of kick us off a little bit, this week would have been a, a normal week when I would have been preaching. Uh, we're looking, once again, we, we've been doing the I Am statements um, in, in the Gospel of John. We've kind of been working our way through and looking at all the various I Am statements. As we've mentioned week to week, there's um, normally noted to be about seven of them within the Gospel. We've noted even more of them, but yet we're still covering them in less than seven weeks, so on six weeks and combining some together. This week, we find ourselves in John chapter 14 with um, a very familiar uh, I am statement, one that, uh, one that many people will know about, but we find it in John chapter 14. And if I were going to be preaching this morning, if we were with you all in a, a radio worship service type setting, uh, this is the scripture reading that I would have given. This would have been one of those weeks where I would have given a little bit of a longer scripture reading. We'd be looking at John 14 verses 1 through 7 um, to kind of set the, the tone for what we'd be talking about this morning. Um, so Jacob, if you don't care to, why don't you go ahead and read that for us? Yeah. So it says, you know, starting in verse one, it says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe in also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. That where I am, you may also be. And you know the way to where I am going. So Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen me or seen him. Okay, so, so there you have it. We, we have our, our scripture reading. Very specifically, we have in verse 6 there of John chapter 14, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. There's our I am statement for the week. Now, as Jesus is, is setting up this scene, as he's talking with his disciples here, I think there's something, a few things that we need to understand about the background. Mm -hmm. 
Um, last week, we were looking at John chapter 11 and, and some of the events going on there. Uh, now we're working our way through from John 11 to John um, 14. So chapters 12 and 13, you, we've got several things going on there. But very specifically, I want to pick up in chapter 13 and kind of set the background from there. You see, in, in chapter 13, chapters 13 through 17 kind of starts a new section in the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. um, many people kind of refer to this as the farewell discourse uh, of Jesus. And up to this point, up to chapter 13, Jesus has been doing a, a lot of his um, a lot of his preaching, uh, a lot of his public teaching. He's been doing it with with large public crowds. Uh, but this section, begin, or, uh, chapter 13, is where Jesus begins to bring it down. And he's having very private, very intimate um, situations with, uh, uh, teaching situations with his, his 12 apostles. And so in chapter 13, we have this story that, that we just, we love so much, that, that shows us so much of the humanity and the humility of Jesus as he begins that section by getting on his hands and his knees and he washes the feet of his 12 apostles. And they're sitting there around the table and all of them with dirty feet, Jesus gets down, he washes their feet. And it's just such this humbling uh, story for us to, to read about. Then in, in chapter, uh, or in verses 18 through 30 of, of that same chapter of John 13, we see that, that Jesus, talks about how somebody will betray him. And eventually it comes down to Judas. And I want you to, to look at this with me. John chapter 13 and um, looking at verses 27, uh, or beginning at verse 27, it says, then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered in him. This is, is Judas. Um, so then after Judas had taken the morsel, Satan entered in him and Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. And so after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. And so verse 30 there especially is, is important there because it tells us that it's at this point Judas has left. And where he has gone to now, he had, Satan has already entered him, and he's gone out to ultimately betray Jesus. And, and so that's where we were at there. And then verse 31, and, and picking up to the end of the chapter there in chapter 13, is where Jesus predicts that Peter is going to deny him. And so it's this, it's this scene where things are just changing rapidly for Jesus and his apostles. And they're really beginning to see that the cross is, is quickly approaching. You go back to, to chapter 12 and, and verse 23, we see this interesting statement where Jesus um, says that the, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And all throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus has been saying that you know, his time has not yet come, that the hour is not yet here. And now Jesus makes that comment that the hour is now here for the Son of Man to be glorified. He's saying, it's time for me to go to the cross. And so the cross is coming near. Judas has left to deny or to uh, betray Jesus, and Peter has now been told that he will deny Jesus three times. All of that leads up to this very first statement in John chapter 14, where Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. And that's such an interesting thing for us to see, because what we're going to find as we look at, at this chapter is that that's how Jesus kind of bookends the whole chapter. He says, let not your hearts be troubled in, in verse 1. And then in verse 27, I think it is, yeah, verse 27, he says, once again, let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus is going to bookend this chapter on that statement. Let not your hearts be troubled. So with that being the case, we're going to look at chapter 14. We're going to look at this I am statement of, of Jesus. But we want you to pause the video here, grab your cup of coffee once again, and read over this this chapter. Uh, just, just pause the video, read over all that, and join us again when you are ready to go. All right, so you've read the chapter. We're looking now at, at these, uh, at this I am statement of Jesus. I want to just kind of take a look first at these first 15 verses, 14 verses of, of John chapter 14. 
he opens up, and, and like I said, he opens up with this idea, let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, he says, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Um, I want to stop there for a second, because I think it's interesting to me that as we have looked at this already a little bit, if ever there was a time for somebody to be troubled, for these apostles, it's now. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus talks to them about, about what has, has been, what, what they're coming to. He has, uh, once again, he's, he's, they've seen Judas walk away. They're still unsure of what's going on, but Judas has, has left to, uh, to betray Jesus. And they've heard of how Peter will deny him. And as all of this is coming on and they know that, that Jesus is getting ready to leave them, they know that they're coming to, to the cross, Jesus makes this statement, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you myself that where I am, you may be also. Now, I think this, this passage, these two verses are really interesting because for us, for, for me, every time I've ever read this, these are almost, a, a, they're verses of hope. You know, and and we, we kind of, we read them and we, we've seen them put on, on signs, the you know, various wall decorations to kind of, uh, you see them put on, on bookmarks because they're, they're verses of hope um, for, for the Christian. And we've always read them as verses of, of hope. And honestly, the biggest debate that we've ever had in any of this is, did Jesus say in my father's house are many rooms? Or did he say in my father's house are many mansions? You know, the old King James version says mansions. And you, there's always talk about, look, are we getting a mansion? Are we getting a room? What, what are we getting? And, and it's all about the hope. But if you read this and you look at it from the viewpoint of the apostles, as they are hearing this, you can understand why Jesus would talk to them about their hearts being troubled. And so he begins to talk to them about how they can be prepared for this moment. Like I said, we we often see this as a passage of hope, but I kind of wonder how these apostles are feeling. And I think we get an idea of it when we read what Thomas says in verse 5. It says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? You see, when we hear it today, we, we hear hope of a mansion or hope of a room or hope of however you want to read that. When Thomas heard him say this, I think all Thomas heard was Jesus is leaving. And for him and for the rest of the apostles, the feeling may not be so much hope in this moment. The feeling may be more of abandonment. The feeling may be more of, you know, how do we move on from here without Jesus? He's led us through all of this. And suddenly we're, we're going to have to start doing this without Jesus. And I think in, in Thomas's voice and what he says, you begin to hear some of that, that uneasiness that the apostles are, are having in this, in this moment. And so I think Jesus gives them a few things here to, to help them ease their anxieties, ease their, their fear of what is to come. Because I think we all fear things like abandonment. I think we all fear things like being alone. And Jesus is trying to, uh, trying to help them through this moment. And so he begins, like I said, in, in those first two verses, talking about you know, a home for them to look forward to. You know, whether they want to call it a room, whether they want to call it a mansion, he, he's telling them, I'm going to go and I'm, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he's saying, when I go there, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm also going to come back for you. I'm, I'm going to take, I'll come again. I'm going to take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. He's telling them, listen, you have this, this future hope to look forward to that one day you're going to be with me. You're going to be with the father in heaven and I'm going to bring you back there. And, and, and this is what you have to look forward to. Thomas hears that and he says, Okay, that, that's great, Jesus. But how do we know how to get there? You know, I, that, that sounds great, but you're, you're leaving us here. How, how do we get there? And so in verse 6, Jesus picks up and he says to him, he makes that statement, I am the way, 
and I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. And then he says, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's enough for us. And you can imagine that Jesus has been teaching them all along. I've shown you the Father just by being with you, and, and still his, his apostles just aren't getting it. And maybe many of their questions are coming out of this fear of, of Jesus leaving them. And you can almost see Jesus getting a little bit just upset with them, getting a little bit irritated. But Jesus very patiently says to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? He's, he's saying they're, they're one and the same. It's, it's all this, this Trinity uh, you know, statements coming back to us again. He says, the words that I say to you, I do not speak my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. And so within that, Jesus has, first off, he, he talks to them about you know, this future home and the hope that they have of a future home. Well, then upon being questioned about it, he tells them how to get there. He says, I'm the way and I'm the truth and I'm the life. And he has to go back and reteach some things that he's already been teaching them. But he's telling them, this, this is the direction you're going. This is how you're getting there. And then in verses 12 through 14, I'll just read it real quick. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. What Jesus is telling them, and this is what you're getting ready to get into, Jacob, is that during this time, there's still going to be a presence for them to, to experience. And so maybe you could talk a little bit about what that presence is for the here and the now for those apostles. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we just had this, well, you just had this uh, sermon series on dwelling in the Spirit, dwelling mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit and who that Holy Spirit is. And I think this is really like your introduction to who that Spirit is. Um, and you're looking for the hope in the future, whereas Jesus is not only hoping or promising the future but he's promising the now yeah he's saying that he's the helper now the father is going to give i mean it says right here in verse 16 i will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever and in 17 he goes on and says even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither knows sees him nor knows him you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you and i, I mean when i first have well, not first read the, this, but whenever I've come back to read this, to study for this uh, thought, it's just, it is kind of confusing yeah. because we do have that Trinity. Like how can one person, you know, at this point for the apostles, they're, they physically see Jesus. Um, they, they see a body. So how could you, Stephen, be two other people? You know, how can you be the son, the father, and this whole, the spirit that you're now promising that's going to live and dwell inside of me and be this helper? Um, but I think it's interesting that he goes on, you know, there's this call of action um, for this hope. And if you go back to 15, Jesus simply says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's this action that he says you know if you love me you're gonna you're gonna show that by keeping who i am and keeping these commandments that i've given you and in doing so i'm sending this helper i'm not going to leave you as an orphan as he says in verse 18 i'm not going to leave you as an orphan but i will come to you yet a little while and the world will see me no more but you will see me because i live you will live also. And I think that's right there. That's really what has struck me. Because I live, this is Jesus, you will live. And so if you jump down into verse 22, Judas, not Iscariot, uh, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? 
And so there's that question, you know, all, all of these different I am statements that we've been talking about, there's always been confusion. There's always been a question right. as to you've explained this to us, but please dumb it down. Like, like I always say, I need to speak in teen talk because that's what I'm used to. That's pretty much what th this would be me. All right, God, you know, I get it, but can you dumb it down for the rest of us? All right, all right, Jesus. And so, you know, going on in verse 23, Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, there's, there's that call of action again. You, you love me. He will keep my word. So there's the, he will keep my commandment. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. And so if you jump down to that verse 27 that you, you mentioned about bookmarking, um, you know, he, he says in 27, what you would say, be the let not your hearts be troubled. But really for this time that we're going through, my brain, my heart needed to hear part A of verse 27. And it's simply Jesus saying, peace I leave with you my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. And I think that right there sums up what this helper is. Yep. This helper is here to dwell inside of you, to give you that peace, to give you, to allow you to have that hope for that future that you were talking about, Stephen. Mm -hmm. But I think that peace that the helper gives to us is that peace of now yep. you know right now i can be peaceful because i know that there's a future in him and so i i definitely have gotten a lot out of that but like you said then he just bookends it he says in the beginning at, at the very beginning of chapter 14 verse 1 let not your hearts be troubled and he kind of says this towards the end of this chapter as well after saying peace i leave with you let not your hearts be troubled so maybe you want to talk more about that, about the let not your hearts be troubled or. Yeah, I, I think that's just such an important point. Um, like I said, especially you know, what we're dealing with in our, in our world right now. Um, I mean, we have so much anxiety over what's going on. And if the only message to us was you've got a future home <laughs> to look forward to, I mean, that'd be a great message. Yeah. But honestly, there would still be a part of me that'd be feeling like, that's great, but I'm living in the here and now. My future yeah. home doesn't give me all, you know, doesn't help me out a whole lot here. Right. And, and so it's, I think, sorry. No, go ahead. I think you can take it as like setting goals. You know, in, yep. in December, we probably all set those goals for January of, of the New Year's resolutions, which probably by now have been broken, to be completely <laughs> honest. But, you know, we set a goal and the goal is in the future. But what are you doing here and now to yep. achieve that goal? Yep. And that's kind of what Jesus is doing here. He's yep. setting that goal for you. He's setting that hope. And, you know, I'm going to lose 50 pounds in 2020. Here's how I'm going to do it right now mm -hmm. is, is, you know, so. That's the thing. I mean, how do we live with hope for the future? And a big part of it is realizing the peace that we have right now because mm -hmm. the, the God that they were experiencing through Jesus in that moment is the same God that we experience every day as we live our lives in the Holy Spirit because God the Holy Spirit and God the Son are you know, one and the same. Um, and, and that's, you know, there, there's so, this is a great chapter when you look at the idea of the Trinity. I mean, if you go back to verse seven again, he says, Jesus says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 17, he says, even the spirit of truth, he's talking about the spirit thing. He says, you know him for he dwells with you. He's talking about himself being with them in that moment and will be in you talking about the indwelling of, of the spirit later. Um, and so Jesus, you connects himself to the father, also connects himself to the spirit. And I think that is, really the, the true message of 
you know, if I could kind of bring this down into one main point that I think Jesus is trying to get to in, in John chapter 14, you know, like we said, he, he bookends it with, let not your hearts be troubled, let not your hearts be troubled. Well, why? I mean, what, what reason does he give them for not letting their hearts be troubled? And I think it is very much in his statement where he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. He's talking about you know, him being the, the way, the truth and life to, to something greater than this in the future, the connection of himself to the spirit in the more in the near future versus the eternal future that he's talking about in, in that uh, you that room he's going to prepare for him. But then on top of that, you've got uh, he makes that statement, I am. And I think that, you know, we, let's not lose that. You know, he's, he, once again, he makes that emphatic I am statement. He says, I, I am. And what his apostles are hearing is the same thing that we've talked about before because they're coming from a Jewish background. They are, are reminded of the story of Moses and the burning bush in Exodus chapter three, where God says to Moses in, in Exodus 3 and verse 14, um, we'll back up to verse 13, says, then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God says to Moses that his name is this. He says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said this, and he said, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. You see, God set the precedent way back in Exodus that his name is I am. And when, when a good Jewish person hears that term, that, that terminology, I am, he's immediately thinking of God, God, the creator, God that, that led their, uh, their ancestors out of Egypt and to the promised land. And so what he's, the statement that he's making to him is that you can, and, and through this whole chapter is don't let your hearts be troubled because I am the God of your past. I'm the God of your ancestors. I'm the God of your forefathers, but I'm also the God of, of your present. I'm the God who is with you right now. Dwelling inside of you. Yeah, exactly. He says, I'm, I'm the God of your present. I'm the God of, of your, your near future. As he's talking mm -hmm. about the Holy spirit, you, um, I think there's almost like two futures in, in yeah. view here. There's you, their future of time here on earth without him and their future of eternal home in heaven. And so he basically says, I'm the God of your future here on earth, but I'm also the God who will be waiting for you and preparing a place for you to have that eternal home. Yeah. And so in all of those statements and in proving to them and showing them that he is the God who is always with them and always will be with them, I think he can rightfully look at them and say, let not your hearts be troubled. No matter what yeah. you're getting ready to face here, don't be troubled over this. Because, basically going back to what you were saying, verse 27, because you're not dealing with the, the anxieties, the craziness, the, mm -hmm. uh, the you, scariness of the world, but you've got something greater than that. You've got the peace. The peace yeah. I leave with you the peace that I give to you. So I yeah. think that's really the, the main point of all this. And, and so he, he says all of that. And so we get to this idea, this question that we've been asking ourselves all along. If Jesus says, I'm the way and I'm the truth and I'm the life. And he's saying, I'm, I'm the God who's going to take you through all of this. The question we have is, all right, then who am I <laughs> in light of the great I am? And I think the answer to that is, I'm okay. I'm at peace. I am able to do this. I'm able to, to move on. Um, and I'm hopeful for what my future holds because my future is not of this earth, mm -hmm. but it's that room that's waiting for me one day that Jesus is preparing for me now. And to kind of bounce off of that, I kind of think this, who am I in the light of the great I am, 
I, I always think of our, our I am board that we have on our Facebook page and at the church. And I just think, you know, me personally, I am a procrastinator and I will always say that there's always tomorrow to, to, you know, get something done. But this, I mean, there's the hope in the today. Mm -hmm. And so why put off, you know, that saying, why put off till tomorrow what you can do today? Really, why we need to look for the future. We need to look for hope in the future. But we also need to realize that there's hope today. Yeah. Um, there's that hope. And so I'm hopeful that tomorrow, today is going to be a good day. Mm -hmm. That we're going to, you know, just have a good atmosphere and that my heart will be at peace. Yep. Um, so. Well, and, and like I said, we, we look at everything that we're dealing with in our world today and we can understand why there's so much anxiety and so much fear. Oh, yeah. And it is incredibly difficult right now to be at peace. But when you think about what the apostles are experiencing in this moment and Jesus is promising that peace to them as well. We just need to keep reminding ourselves that we live with that same peace. We, we have all these promises that Jesus has made to them are promises that he makes to us. And the I am God of the Old Testament is the I am God that Jesus is, embody, is the embodiment of in the New Testament and is the I am God that lives within each one of us today. Um, yeah. So the peace that, that he gave them there is the peace that he gives us now. Yeah, and being the music person that I am, I, I'm drawn to this song right now, um, just thinking of everything that we've talked about, and it's just wonderful, merciful Savior mm. that we sing at church. And so I, I just want to read the second verse in the chorus. And the second verse of it is this counselor, comforter, keeper, the spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost our way. You are the one that we praise and you are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. And I just thinking about that song just with this passage is good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, um, and I do like that you connect the, the, um, the songs that we sing with the message that, that we're thinking about, and um, maybe we can, uh, I think that'd be a good song for us to, to sing together when, when we get back, and I look forward to the time when we all get back uh, together, and unfortunately, just we don't know when that will be right now, and we're hoping and we're praying that it's, it's sooner than later, but really do look forward to, to singing about and, and sharing in that peace uh, with each other and praying that we can experience that peace right now. So, I don't know, JB, you have, oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying, maybe you want to offer like a little prayer for yeah. us? Yeah, I was uh, just getting ready to, to get to that. I was gonna see if you had anything else that you want to say before that. So I'm, I'm, ass so. I'm assuming not. So, um, yeah. well folks, we, we do appreciate you joining us for this. Like I said, we look forward to and, and, and hope to be back together with you here soon. But in the meantime, we will continue to be putting out resources like this. Don't forget to check the, the resources in, in the description below to check out some of the songs, um, check out that, that study that you can do with your kids. And we just ask that you keep praying for um, our world at this time. Pray for those who are working on the front lines of this. Pray for those who are being affected by this, uh, you who are dealing with the illness or, or, deal, or helping to take care of people dealing with the illness and pray for everybody as, as they deal with just the anxiety of not knowing what to do. Pray for our leaders as they make decisions um, and, and just remember that none of us have gone through this before yeah. and decisions are, are hard to make when you don't have the experience of, of having gone through it before. And, and so just be patient and, and pray for our leaders as they make those um, decisions. But we, we do look forward to, to being with you soon and uh, we'll be praying for you and ask that you pray for us as well. But oh, yes, yeah. one more thing. Uh, I forgot to mention it earlier. We are trying to think of a way or come up with a way to, to sing together. Um, 
so I want to let you all know that we, we haven't forgotten singing together. We haven't forgotten communion. You know, like Stephen just said, none of us have ever gone through this before. So we're still trying to play the learning game. Yeah. So we're, we're, we are thinking of those things. Mm -hmm. We're not throwing them to the side at all. We're just trying to think of, you know, and, and pray about the best route to go with that. Yeah. Um, so. But in the meantime, what, you know, we also encourage you to, to find ways to do that on your own as well. I mean, obviously it's, um, it's not the ideal situation. We'd love mm -hmm. to be doing that together, but we do encourage you to kind of get creative and find ways to do those things within uh, your own families and your own groups that, that you're together with. Um, and like I said, hopefully we'll be together soon and we'll have, we'll just be able to get back to normal. Um, I think that's what we're all looking forward to. So yeah, we'll have one big party after all this. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's close with a prayer and uh, then we'll be talking to everybody here soon. Right. Holy Father, we, uh, we come to you now, we just thank you for the peace that we can have um, in you and, and because of you and because of your presence within us. Even though everything around us is just so uncertain right now, Father, we just pray that we can constantly find our hope and our encouragement, and our peace, in knowing that you are the, the God who, uh, who's always been there, who has brought this, uh, brought this world and, and brought your people through every trial that's ever been, been thrown at it. And Father, we pray that we will just take peace in, in, in knowing that you're greater than this and that you can, uh, you can lead us through this. And, and so Father, we thank you for that, that hope and that comfort we have because of you. And, and Father, we pray right now for uh, our leaders as they make decisions as to how to handle these things. We pray for uh, those who are working the, the front lines in, in all the various forms and fashions, and just pray that you will keep them safe. Uh, pray that you will keep them, them strong and, and help them to know that, that we do appreciate everything that they're doing. Father, we pray for everyone who's being affected by this illness and, and pray that um, those who, who are dealing with it can recover from it. We pray that we can find a solution here soon to, to help us to, to work past this, Father. Father, we pray that um, you help us as a church to be a, a shining light um, for you through all of this so that people can, can experience that, that same peace that, that we can experience. Father, we thank you for, um, uh, for this church. We, we, we thank you for the people that are a part of this body as well as a part of, of, of your church worldwide. And we pray that even as we can't be together this morning, that we can realize that we are together in you this morning. Father, we thank you for um, your word and for the hope that we can, uh, can find in, in the message of your word. Father, we just, we pray that you will guide us through this. Um, we pray that you will give us wisdom uh, as to how to, to take these next steps. But Father, we thank you so much that ultimately our hope is not in the things of this world, but is in the, the home that, that you're preparing for us. And Father, we look forward to the day that we can be with you. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that your son made so that we can, uh, that our sins can be washed away and that we can, can live with you, Father, so that we can enter into that, that home with you. And Father, we, we thank you for Jesus. We love you so much. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.